of all, thank you very much for accepting uh, coming here to, to Portugal and sharing your knowledge with us. Uh, my, my first question would be, uh, could you walk us through the main topics that you will be approaching in your lecture? Yeah, um, the, m the most important thing that we are going to do is of course working together with the coaches to make them better coaches as well. And the subjects that we are dealing with uh, are the subjects that we are facing in the international hockey now. Because I believe that the uh, high performance level is giving the lines for the lower level what you need to develop, what you need to train. That means that we will spend time on the one-on-one -on -one in defense, in attack. We will spend time on two against one, three against one, four against two. We will spend time both in theory and in practice in uh, tactical formations. What are we doing? How are we facing that? Of course, we will spend time for penalty corners, uh, we will spend some time on the goalkeeper. Uh, most of it is depending, of course, on the uh, amount and the level of the coaches as well. Uh, the more eager they are, the more in-depth we can go. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, more about the message side of it. What do you think is the main message of your lecture? What do you really want to pass to our coaches? What's the Belief in the plans that you have yourself based on a good vision on the development of athletes and the development of hockey in particular. So we all need to understand that training and coaching is a time demanding activity. Um, players are supposed to be a talent, then they enter the national program and in the national program they have to develop any further but the development of course starts with the youngsters in the clubs or at the schools depending on the system in the country and trainers and coaches need to understand that they develop parts of the education of the talent you cannot expect a player of 14 15 years to be ready for the gold medal game in the olympics Everybody thinks that's logic. But that means that we have to work very hard ourselves at club level, at school level, at national level. And that is demanding to everybody in the staff because you need physical trainer, mental trainer, skilled trainer, um, uh, nutrition uh, experience, psychology experience. All those things together form a part. And what I believe at the end of these uh, two days in the session, the coaches will understand and be enthusiastic about their own role in the development of athletes. There is no one um, recipe book. Eh? Yeah. I cannot say this is the one and only way, but this is what we have learned over the years uh, all around, that uh, all coaches have some good ideas, otherwise they won't be the, the good coaches. And they have a vision, and the vision is depending on the development of their own ideas about hockey. Uh, vision is also dependent on the development of the rules. Vision is dependent on the uh, development of sports in general. Uh, vision is dependent on how healthy people can play the games. All these things play part of that. And um, I hope that the coaches, of course, will understand that I'm not here uh, to say, here, this is my recipe book and tomorrow you will be the new Olympic champion. <laughs> uh, so, to the, to, our co to the coaches that want to keep improving and involving their careers, um, even internationally, what would you recommend to them as a practical means to achieve it? Of course, nothing is guaranteed. No. But no, no. What, in your vision, with your experience, what yeah. do you think should be the steps if you, think, if you think you are uh, nicely based on the basic principles of the National Federation, <clears throat> then you have to do a lot of study work. You have to study yourself and nowadays there is a lot of uh, possibilities on the uh, social media, uh, both from Netherlands, England, Germany, uh, Australia, uh, Argentina. Coaches are putting lots of information on internet, on YouTube. FIH is having the YouTube uh, film section. All big tournaments are being televised or streamed. That means 
that you can find a lot of information. But to use that information and translate the information to value in training and coaching activities, you need to, dis to discuss that and, and uh, argue about it with other coaches. Uh, EHF and FIH, particularly now, have the uh, FIH Academy of Sports, Academy, Hockey Academy, and they work together with the World Academy of Sports to make sure that there is a lot of information available for all coaches around the world. Then, of course, coaches need to go to international competitions. See the competition, if it's in your country, uh, field hockey or indoor hockey, hockey sala, or whatever you uh, have for opportunities. Also, as a coach, study means you have to look to other sports. Maybe you can find some very valuable information from athletics, or from soccer, or from handball, or from um, hockey patinage, yeah? for example. You have to have an open mind in sport itself to develop yourself by discussion and learning. And of course, much doing. Eh? Go to the pitch and work with the children, work with the players. Uh, try to understand there is a starter, a beginner, there is an advanced player, and in the end you have the elite player. No one person is born as an elite athlete, uh, athlete in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, in your, in your opinion, for a federation such as our own, what do you think should be our main focus in order to help those coaches achieve their goals? Help them in visiting FIH courses, help them and stimulate them to uh, visit uh, international tournaments, and what I have seen in several, several countries uh, in Europe now, that uh, one or two promising coaches are being sent with the national team or with the national coaches as an observer to learn and then when they are good enough they can be the national coach of the under 16 then the under 18 then the under 21 then the national team and if you work properly and you have a good bunch of people you can imagine that the federation can structure and build on its own coaching staff I also have to admit that uh, small federations always face the point of money, attention and contribution to uh, the federation itself. Of course, when Argentina has a federation of, I understood, about 200,000 members, Netherlands is about 300,000, Australia is over 200,000, the more volume in the federation, the easier it sometimes looks but it's always good to make uh, work with the players, work with the coaches, that young talented coaches can be observer in the next level and they can be the coaches in the level below. After a couple of years, they can steadily grow. And as is the case in the long-term athlete development model, as is developed in Canada, in England, um, all the way to become a gold medal winner is a track of at least seven to ten years and this counts about the ten years of thousand dedicated hours of training this is not only for for players but this also counts for coaches uh, you see some good coaches they have studied many many years they stay successful for many many years other coaches come and go they don't want to invest in their own future yeah, then, of course, you will be overtaken by younger people with more enthusiasm and more drive. Thank you. What are, this is a more uh, over, overview question. What are, in your views, the, the core traits that every coach should have? Ah, that's... He must be... Um, first of all, he has to be human. Because as a coach, you uh, need to have some empathy to understand the player, but you also have to be uh, objective to judge and properly make your final selections. Coaches are always persons that have to uh, disappoint people, unfortunately. Because you select for your national team maybe 20 or 25 players, 
but there can only go 18 to a tournament or 16 to the Olympic Games. That means that coaches always have this debate. Why I have to explain somebody you are not good enough to be in my team at this particular moment in time. In the same time, coaches need to give support to the players in what particular point, which particular points they have to improve. This can be physical, this can be mental, this can be uh, body weight, this can be uh, basic skills, this can be social behavior inside the team. The coach has to do so many things. And if you don't want to invest in yourself, how can you invest in a team? If you don't want to suffer yourself, how can you ask the team to suffer, to finally become a champion? So, it's, it's not very easy. Um, coaches must be willing to learn. And then, use the knowledge, share the knowledge with the players, and try to understand that none of us will be the coach that brings one player from his birth to his final day on earth. Uh, coaches are always involved in a part of the development. That said, also means that some people are very good to work with, with youngsters from 14 to 20, and other people are very good to work with 20 to 30, which we need to understand. And then it's not the case that a, a coach that is very successful with youngsters, uh, by definition, is not a good senior coach or the other way around. Both have a value in the development of athletes. Thank you. So, as, as, as far as questions go, we're, yeah. we're finished. Uh, do you have anything you would like to, to a message you would like to send to our community, to our cultures? Uh, Stay enthusiastic and love the game. <laughs> because it's a fantastic game. Uh, it is a high speed game, interval speed. Uh, both indoor hockey and, and field hockey and, and what we see now in, in Europe that smaller federations like Portugal, like Austria, like uh, Iraq, uh, no Iran, they are able to bring very strong indoor teams and the development that FIH has uh, brought forward with the 5 against 5 in the uh, Youth Olympic Games seems to be a, a good step for smaller countries to participate in the international competition. I know that several players from Portugal, the uh, national team, played in Venlo last year in the Netherlands mm -hmm. with Bernardo. I think that's very good. They are exposed to a higher level of competition. Mm -hmm. And what Bernardo does himself is of course f uh, also very good. He wants to invest in himself. And I'm sure there must be more young Bernardos in Portugal. Because, because like after Bernardo, there has to come a new Bernardo. Or maybe Daniel, you never know. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, pleasure.